All right. In this video, I wanted to share one of my favorite riddles. And I'm going to start by sharing what the riddle is about, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the answer to this riddle. So, so the fun in this riddle is to solve it. So halfway through, you might want to pause it or stop the video and come back for the answer if, if you're feeling really stuck. But, but play with this riddle. It's really fun. Uh, don't just watch it through and see the answer. That kind of ruins the fun of it. So, so what's the riddle? Well, you're sitting at a table and you're blindfolded. Now, that just basically means that you cannot see anything in this video. You can't see anything. Um, there's no tricks about that. You just can't see. And on the table in front of you, there are 50 quarters. And out of those 50, 17 of them are heads up. Right? And that means, of course, that 33 of them are tails up. And that's what you know. Right? And we don't know how the quarters are arranged. They could be in a pile. They could be spread out evenly. Uh, all we know is there are 50 of them, and 17 of them are already heads up, and the rest are tails. Um, of course, they wouldn't be in some crazy kind of pile like this, um, because it would be too hard to solve it like that. But they're, the point is they're, they're, they're distributed in some way that you can't predict. Um, so the goal is, how do, you, how do you do this? How do you put the quarters in two piles and have each pile have the same number of heads, right? How do we do this? And, and we can use our hands, of course. We can't feel the quarters. We can't put them on their sides, but we can flip them, right? So no, no using your finger to figure out which of the coins are heads up. And here's the riddle in its entirety. So here you might want to pause and or stop the video and try to solve this. Because from now on, I'm going to talk about my way of breaking this riddle down. So how do I do it? How do I solve this riddle? Well, there are many ways I'm sure to solve this riddle. I found one, and uh, I guess I should start by explaining again what the goal of the riddle is. Let's say, for example, you're sitting at a table, and on that table there are just five quarters. And out of the five, three of the quarters are, are tails up, and two of them are heads. If that was the case, um, then the riddle is saying, okay, take all those quarters and put them in two piles. And in each pile, it doesn't matter if the tails are unevenly distributed, if there are two here and one there. Our goal is to make it so that each pile has the same number of heads. Notice here they have different numbers of quarters. There are two here and three there, but we still solve the riddle Excuse me for, for five quarters, right? We've done it. We've put them in two piles so that each pile is one head. And that's our goal here, except now we're not dealing with five quarters, we're dealing with 50 quarters, and 17 of them are heads, and 33 of them are tails. So really, I mean, to get at this problem, you want to experiment a little bit. Um, you know that you can flip the coins, so try an extreme. That's how I like to start these kind of riddles. Um, let's flip all of them. Does that even help us? Well, if we flip all of them, what will happen? Flip all the quarters, all the heads become tails. So now, when that happens, when we flip all of them, we get 17 tails and 33 heads. Still, these are unfriendly numbers, and that doesn't really help us. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's try another extreme. Let's flip none of them. Flip no coins. Well, if we don't flip any, we're stuck in this predicament. We have 17 random heads that are, are facing up with 33 tails that are down. So I've kind of created a situation where I know that flipping all and flipping none doesn't help. So I have to find something in the middle. I have to flip some number of coins, right, in a way that helps me separate them in two groups of equal heads. And I guess the trick here is that it's not so much um, how you how you pull the coins apart. That's that's kind of the heart of this problem because you know you could never predict where the coins are. So we have to f we have to come up with a solution where we put the coins in two groups and then by flipping all of one of the groups, right? We can actually come up with an answer. So what I mean is realize that we don't know on this table, right? There are 50 quarters. We're blind and we can't see and we can't feel. So the only thing we can do for sure is count the number of coins we're putting in each group. So we have to make two groups of coins and then flip one of them. 
in order to solve this riddle. Because how can you do this any other way consistently, right? You can't, you can't just pick certain coins and flip just those coins. You can't say, oh, we're just going to flip uh, a couple of heads and tails. You can't do that. So it has to be a solution where you put them in groups and then flip one of the groups. So I'm going to put them in groups of 17 and 33 coins, right, the quarters. And the reason I chose 17 um, is because at some point it just occurred to me, well, if we have 17 coins, let's just try a group of 17 and see if that helps us. And what's so remarkable about this riddle, and maybe I'll talk about it more in other videos about what's happening here, but it's so remarkable that this actually works. If you put the 50 quarters in two groups, and you have one group be a small group of 17 quarters, and the other group be a larger group of 33 quarters, you can solve the riddle. And what you do is, is to actually flip the smaller group, right? Flip this group of coins. Now, you can't feel the coins, but you know there's less coins here because you counted them out. You separated them to so flip the group, this group of coins. And, and that's going to work. It's always going to give you the same number of heads. And this is where you want to do some if-then testing. So for example, let's say you made a small group of 17 quarters. And out of those 17 quarters, try an extreme. Let's say you got all tails, so 17 tails. What does that mean about the larger group of quarters? Well, remember, there were 50 quarters to begin with, right? And out of those 50 quarters, there were 17 heads. It just so happens, let's say, in this arrangement, you didn't pull any of the heads out, so all 17 heads are in this pile. And the rest, of course, are, are what? They're, they're tails, right? 16 tails. And altogether, that's 50, right? 10, 20, 30, plus 7, plus 14 is 44, plus 6 is 50. So now what we do, if you can, see, you can almost see it right away, right? If we flip these 17 tails, so you want to flip this, you flip all those coins, and what you will get is 17 heads. And then we match. So by separating the coins in two groups, one that was 17, one that was 30, 33, uh, if we flip the smaller group, we end up, in this case, having the same number of heads. Now, this always works. Try another extreme. Well, what if we, what if we happen to grab all the heads in that small group of 17 coins, and then we have... 33 tails here. Well, if we have 33 tails in a larger group, we have no heads. So by flipping all of the coins in the smaller group, what happens? Well, we get all tails. And now we match. Why? Because both groups have zero heads. Let's just try one more example in the middle so we feel confident here. If we have like another arrangement, let's say we have, I don't know, 10 heads in this group. We only pulled 10 of them out. But we know there are 17 quarters in the smaller group, so there would be 7 tails. In the larger group, there are still 33 coins. How many heads are there? Well, since to begin with there were 17 heads, and there are 10 here, there have to be 7 heads here. right? That's the rest of the quarters that are heads up. And so far we have um, 24 coins. We still need right, 16 more. Am I saying that right? No. 10, 17, yeah, 24. Oh, that's, sorry, we need to get to, um, to, to, to 50. So we need 26 more coins. It's 26 tails. Right? I'm, I'm blanking here. Sorry, it's 26, 36, right? 36 plus 7 is 43, plus that's 50. Okay, sorry. So let's say we have that happened to pick this random arranger because it will be random, right? We can't control this problem. We don't know where the coins are. Still, if we flip all of the coins in the smaller pile, what happens? Well, all of the coins that were heads now become tails. So we have 10 tails. And all the ones that were tails now become heads. And look at that. Here we have seven heads in the smaller pile and seven heads in the larger pile. So regardless of how we approach this problem, what, what coins we actually grab, by separating in two groups, where one group has 17 coins and one group has the other 33, Right? By flipping the smaller group, we're able to actually match the number of heads in each pile. Now, extensions to this, to this problem, um, I encourage you to play with it. Try different numbers. In other words, try larger groups right, of coins. Try groups of coins where there are more heads than tails. Can you still, can you do, still do this? How, how do the numbers affect 
the strategy of this problem. What if you had a dice and you want to separate the dice into groups that have perhaps the same number? Can you approach it in the same way, right? If you have random dice and random sides, there are all kinds of fun ways to extend the ideas of this problem. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.